Hello, CrossCard fans. If you couldn't tell by the intro, today is kind of cleanup day. Finishing out things we've started, uh, boxing in some of the parts. If you didn't already see what I did with the steering is I drilled the holes in the double D for the pass-through bolt. Uh, I got this in the exact position I wanted, height and everything. And now the steering is locked in <laughs> and it feels really good. So this is the kind of stuff that uh, I'll edge it in, kind of figure out where I want it, and then give it a second look to make sure that I wasn't just in a hurry or getting tired for the day. Kind of revisit it to, to make 100% sure that I like it. And this was one of those things. This needed to come up maybe two inches, but since I only tacked it in, all I had to do was put the jack under it, pop it up a couple inches, finish out the weld. Now we have a very sturdy uh, steering system. These tires look incredible. This whole thing is crazy. So let's get to work. Um, now, I have been exploring with uh, the little rear end problem. If you didn't see it before, this motor has to ride about three to four inches higher because the exhaust runs underneath. And that created a problem with my forward upper A-arm mount. Now, I was just gonna run a 17 two sprocket in the front and a larger sprocket in the rear to get that clearance, which I have but I'm not super thrilled about it because I think it can be better. Um, this 17 two sprocket runs really close to all the components inside here. The, the clutch pass-through rod, the, uh, the shift shaft coming through. And I'd be a lot happier if it was like a 15 tooth on here. And obviously a smaller sprocket on the rear. A 48 tooth sprocket is actually bigger than or the brake rotor. So um, I've got two options. I can change the geometry of the rear by just redoing these rear mounts and raising this a couple inches. Um, these are set up with four and a half inches because I like something called camber gain. That means as the buggy rolls, the wheel won't move straight up and down. It'll kind of camber in. So you're leaving a flat contact patch even though your body's rolling a couple inches even with the sway bar. So moving this up two inches in the rear and causing that separation will delete some of that camber gain. Another option would be to just take this rear bracket, move the whole thing up two inches, leave our spacing, and move our forward mount up two inches. So that's just something that's been in the back of my mind. I might do a combination of both, <laughs> make new brackets for the rear that are spaced one inch apart and then raise the bottom one inch and i'll give me the two inches that'll put it right at center line of uh, these two sprockets i don't know we'll have a look at it we'll keep working and get familiar with with uh, the setup and then revisit it later so our uh, second cleanup item after the steering is getting this rear end in place we have to do this before we can do the exhaust. We gotta get the brake caliper on, check our clearances, and it should look, when you're done, something like this. Now this is just one inch tubing, and it's run off this rear cross member. So we'll get that in position. We'll cut our one inch tubing, and uh, it just runs on that bolt, so it kinda has three points of uh, strength to hold that rear end in place. So, our first step, is cutting this rear cross member. All right, PC38, just cross member between the rear uprights. Now this bolt is going to pass right through here. So we need to drill a hole on this side that's the size of the bolt, and then a little bigger for this uh, convex washer to ride in. Now the purpose of this is to keep this carrier from moving forward. The chain keeps it from moving back, so with our support bars coming off of these ears to this bolt, plus the bottom one, plus this bolt keeping it from going forward, this is a very, very strong setup. All right, so how this works is it's on a pivot point, right? It's on a radius. So this 
bolt is always gonna follow the same point within this specified range. So all you have to do is get this bolt locked into place and this will still be adjustable to the factory settings. Now, what you wanna do before you do that is get this centered where you want it based on your caliper and your sprocket size and then center this bolt in the ears coming off um, so that if you add a smaller sprocket, you can come back. And if you add a bigger sprocket, you can go forward. All right, so I've got the rear caliper on. I've checked my clearance to the front of this. Uh, it's only about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is since that's the forward most point it can be, I'm gonna move this bolt all the way back and I'm gonna do my measurements from that. So the first thing is to make this bar that goes across here. Now, if you're saving your holes from using your hole saw in flat metal, it's gonna be no trouble making the ends that go on this to fit that bolt. So I'm gonna cut this about a quarter inch short so I can add one eighth on each side. There we go. And this is just left over from making these A-arms. So the pieces I have left over, I will easily be able to make this piece. All right, so I don't know if you guys ever run into this, but I get this uh, a couple times on each build. Um, I try to plan for it, but some of the cuts you have to make are just, can't be designed around it. So this piece is too short to fit in the notch or to get a good notch. So here's a little tip. Uh, get yourself a scrap piece of one and a quarter. Your one inch slides right into there. Then you can put this whole assembly in there and then I just tack it in place. Make my hole saw cut. Hit the tack weld with an angle grinder. And Bob's your uncle. You can do that for the other side as well. Too easy, hope it helps. Okay. So we got this piece all done and cleaned up. Um, I cleaned it up really nicely because we're not gonna get the chance again before it goes to paint because it's getting welded in. So now you just take your lateral piece, you run your bolt through it, and then you take your two lengths that you put the whole saw cut in, you put those in there, you measure up your next whole saw cut. Now, since we have this on the forward limiting factor, um, it looks like it's just gonna be a really shallow cut in this, which makes it really easy. So let's get that and get it tacked in and this will be done. And there you have it, a solid adjustable rear end. So back end's buttoned up, let's move on.
All right, so I took the A-arms off the back and here are the brackets. Um, I am just going to make them one inch longer. That's gonna clean up our issue with the chain. It's really not a lot of work. It sucks that this didn't work out, but we gotta do it the right way. And if it in involves uh, refabbing a few brackets, to get a uh, good chain clearance, then that's what we're gonna do. So I'll get to work on this, just four new of these, and we actually kind of lucked out because now we have the template for our curve in the rear end. All right, let's check our work here, see what we've done. Um, I finished up the rear A-arms. I got them boxed in on the bottom, so this is nice and strong now. Um, I made new brackets for the back. These are now spaced at five and a half inches rather than four and a half. What that did, you can see our chain now has plenty of clearance around this upper A-arm mount. Plenty of clearance. So even if you hit the brakes and this comes in, um, this chain is not on a swing arm. So it can actually run pretty tightly without causing damage to the chain because it's just a single chain. You don't need as much slack in it. So you can see you have well over an inch of movement in there. I think it came out all right. Uh, move this up. Well, actually I moved it up a full inch which is all we needed. It's not perfectly centered on it, but this is a 15 two sprocket. Um, we could probably step it down to a 14, but since this is a motorcycle engine, uh, we're not gonna go much smaller because we'd have to go a lot bigger in the back. Uh, on the back right now is a 42 tooth. So this back one's only gonna get bigger. Um, like I said, I tried to fit the 17 on here and it was too big. So 15, maybe 16 is gonna be our front sprocket and we'll uh, fine tune it with the rear one. Yeah, it's looking really good.